Do you see our presence in the universe at this very moment in time for 60 or 70 or 80 years as one whisper? And we can't give meaning to our own lives because there are no preconditions, there is no God, there is no moral hmm. statement in the universe itself, of the universe itself. Isn't that more challenging than returning to the old idea of a moral God who needs us to? Mm. If you want to live your life being challenged, that's fine, but... Um, you want to be consoled. Yes. I, I'm, no, I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of things which are more challenging than my worldview, um, but it doesn't follow that they're, for that reason, more true. Uh, and most, there are, it's possible for someone uh, of like Rilke to live with a kind of death of God feeling, mm -hmm. to say to himself, for God has been taken from the world along with so many, much else. I will now remake everything according to my own inner light and find consolation there. And to some extent, that's what I do. But um, not everybody is Rilke. Most people deprived of this kind of consolation don't live, don't rise to the challenge at all. They sink a long way beneath it and uh, li live without that aspiration to be something better that they would otherwise have had. Um, so I'm not, I'm very much opposed to taking this sort of thing away from people. If you lose it yourself, then of course that could be regarded as a misfortune or you might regard it as a great liberation mm -hmm. as Nietzsche tried to do. But that's your problem, you deal with it. And, you know, I have my own way of dealing with it, and I think I have dealt with it, and worked my way back to something, nothing, not really the god of organized religion or anything like that, but I've worked my way back to something like the god idea. I'm given it a, a place in my life which enables me to stand, to some extent, in judgment on myself, as I think I should. If I say afterlife... Hmm. Oh, it, that's a mystery. It's the same mystery as time itself, isn't it? Uh, what, what we are, we are only he here and now. Yeah. But here and now is also eternal when properly experienced. It is, Mr. Scruton, but after 60 or 70 years, you're dead mm. and buried. Mm. That's it. The world goes on, mm. reality goes on, time mm. goes on. That may very well be true. But um, look at it in another way. That, those 70 years that were given to you under subspatia eternitatis, they haven't been taken from reality. Nobody in the future is going to revisit them. But you will revisit them because they are yours. You won't revisit them in time, but that time is yours and is yours eternally. And this is what Nietzsche should have meant by eternal recurrence, yeah. that you should live each moment of your life, not as though it were a fleeting moment, but as though it were eternally there, fixed, made what it is, but fixed, as it were, in another dimension. And that is a consoling thought. Because after all, in this time, in time as we experience it, after death, you are no more, and therefore you lose nothing, nor do you gain anything. Mm -hmm. um, and there is nothing for you to miss. But in these 70 years, you have everything, and it will be there always. Those are your 70 years. And um, how to envisage that? You can't envisage that without you. You can't envisage those 70 years from a point of view outside them, mm. in which you are not. Any perspective that you can have on them 
is a perspective which will show them to be eternally there with you. And you will never lose them, except by losing yourself. So it's up to you to live them well. And um, when Dr. Faustus in Christopher Marlowe's play says, this is hell, nor am I out of it, that's what he means. His, his pact with the devil has translated his world into hell by the very fact that it's now based upon uh, a compromise of his being, a surrender of his freedom to, some, to, an, to a force which he detests. Anyway, <coughs> that's slightly mystical, but um, what's the point of philosophy if it doesn't enable you to say mystical things? No. Why is it that so many people are lying after a wonderful paradise, an afterlife, eternity? Do we understand it? Mm. Well, I'm not talking mm. about... A, the view of Nietzsche now, I'm talking about the everyday yes. view of people coming to a church, longing for eternity, eternal life. Well, it's a, a parable of that eternity is what it they have. It seems to be a looking for consolation, mm. is it? Yes, um, of course. When people lose that longing for paradise, they start instead longing to win the national lottery or something. They engage okay. in vulgar, secular versions of it. I mean, it's in all of our nature to long for the compensation for what we have not had and to think that finally they'll be given to us that which we've always wanted. Um, but it may be that... Um, that is the only way that many people can live properly, by holding in front of themselves this ideal and trying to earn it. But, uh, of course, it doesn't stand up very easily to examination. But there's nothing vulgar or silly in wanting that. And after all, the greatest trial that all human beings have to confront is that of death, how, how to accept the fact that, you know, that I will die. What is it that I, how should I think of myself in order to do that? I've just given a way of thinking of it, which makes it easy, easier for you, people like you and me, to confront this. But it wasn't, wouldn't make it easier for many people. They need something else. concept of consolation that we have is influenced through and through by the Christian religion, which is after all the foundation of a civilization and it's what glows in the embers of Hegel's philosophy too. And this presented us with this extraordinary image of consolation through loss in the death of God himself on the cross, a most extraordinary voluntary renunciation of this life in the, and acceptance of the most painful form of death, um, which in itself perhaps has a tragic quality to it, but also um, is a redemptive story. It's a story about the redemption of the soul through this uh, repudiation of earthly things. Mm -hmm. It has been the, the central image of consolation in our tradition and it's yeah, an extraordinary it's idea. For you, it remains a kind of ultimate symbol. Of yes, of a, yes. Uh, the, that but why? That there is a, a path of renunciation, which is also an acceptance. It's not a path that I have the strength to take. Why should we accept? Father, forgive them. Come on. But why should we not accept when, when we have to? There's, there's two, we have two choices. One is to go towards our end, accepting it. The other, the other is to be dragged, kicking and screaming towards it. But it's the same outcome either way. 
the only thing that we have the freedom to do is to achieve the serenity beforehand, which comes from willing sacrifice. So I think that um, you know, this is a, a model of rational conduct. Mm -hmm. Now, that's enough of that subject. <laughs>